It's finally here, the AMD Radeon 7 graphics card. Well, I shouldn't say it's actually here. The unboxing embargo is here. Oh, what a world we live in. So today I'm just throwing my video into the pile of other unboxing videos that are probably blowing up your sub feed right now. And thank you for clicking on mine. February 7th is when the card launches for 699 US dollars. That puts it right up there with the RTX 2080 from Nvidia. So let's hope, I haven't tested it yet obviously, but let's hope that the performance is there to match and stay competitive with an RTX 2080. I didn't cover this card at all at CES this year when it was initially debuted, but that doesn't mean I wasn't excited about it. I've been waiting for a long time, I think we all have, for Nvidia to get a little bit of competition, for them to see just a little bit of competition in the high-end GPU space. They've objectively been dominating the market for a while now, and without really solid competition in that space, ultimately it's the customers who suffer. So I'm really rooting for the underdog here, and sincerely hoping that this card can offer gamers a viable alternative to GeForce cards in the high-end GPU market. It's fairly well known at this point that this is the world's first seven nanometer gaming GPU. Very exciting. Uh, Turing with the uh, GeForce is 12 nanometer. So we're gonna pop the lid off of this bad boy. Hey, simple, simple and clean. I like it. You got a card and a plastic thing. W what, what is this? Looks like a stand. Ooh, look at it. They got the GPU right there. That's a big sucker. Ooh, what is this, candy? No, th these are batteries. Oh, I see. These probably go in here. I doubt that they power the GPU. I'm sure it needs a bit more juice than that. Let's take the card out first and then we'll mess around with this business. Scooch aside here. Now this GPU, I'm going to try to do this one-handed while filming. It features 60 compute units. Oh, this is, this is going to be a challenge. 60 compute units. 3,840 shader units. Oh my God. Professional and boxer here. So that's actually fewer units overall than its predecessor, the RX Vega 64. However, we are packing double the frame buffer with 16 gigs of HBM2 memory on a 4,096 bit bus, giving us a terabyte of memory bandwidth. And that seven nanometer architecture has really done AMD some favors when it comes to clocking this thing. Out of the box, we're gonna see peak frequencies of 1800 megahertz. That's about 300 megahertz higher than we saw with the RX Vega 64. And of course the architecture isn't just about raw power, it's also about power efficiency. So at 300 megahertz faster than an RX Vega 64, it's still drawing around the same amount of power, which is pretty impressive. Now this card doesn't have any RT cores on it like the Turing cards do, but AMD has said that it can handle ray tracing workloads just fine. And in some cases even outperform its Turing rivals in particular ray tracing workloads. There's also no crossfire support for this card. It's a bit of a lone wolf in that sense, which is fine by me. I mean, I would imagine that getting 32 gigs of HBM2 memory to work nicely together would be a waking nightmare. And plus, I usually suggest people go with a single faster card anyway, as opposed to doing a multi-GPU setup for reliability, stability, and performance. Taking a closer look at the card, you've still got uh, your tried and true PCIe Gen 3 here. And it looks like a very sort of simplified and minimalistic design here. It's like they took a, a piece of sheet metal, bent it a couple times, cut out a couple holes, and bam, there's your reference design GPU. You got three fans. They look to be about 92 millimeters or so, and the heat sink. This portion of the heat sink is actually much taller than the portion you're seeing underneath the fans. So it does provide a little extra heat dissipation. You can see that there's a copper plate right there, and it's a fairly open shroud. Nothing's getting ejected out the front, if you want to call this the front of the GPU, but certainly air is going to be exhausted out the bottom, the top to some degree, and certainly the back. So be sure to plan your airflow path accordingly should you be popping one of these into a future build. While we're at the rear here, woohoo! Let's take a look at our I.O. We've got one HDMI and three display ports. Radeon branding, of course. This is very similar to the RX Vega 64. Four. This probably lights up red. Not expecting any RGB here. We've also got that Radeon cube in the corner that I'm sure lights up too. Just above that, dual eight pin power plugs. Again, 295 watt TDP. I'm very curious to see exactly how much power this will draw from the wall though. And of course I can't talk about that right now. The back plate. The back plate looks very nice. Kind of uh, the same sort of color machining as the front. All very uniform. I wonder if this adds any sort of thermal dissipation. Definitely has a lot of slots for ventilation, but uh, looks like it's fairly close to the PCB be there. Yeah, it's like right on it. I'd be curious to tear this thing apart and uh, check to see if there's any thermal pad situation or if this is actually being used as a heat sink of some sort. The card's not super tall or anything. Maybe extends uh, three quarters of an inch over the, the L shape of the of the PCI bracket there. And it measures about 12 inches long. That's 305 millimeters for those of you who live in a place where things make sense. I've been feeling it this whole video, but I haven't pointed it out till now. This card is very heavy. I mean, between the back plate and the full length heat sink, 
just the shroud itself being all metal, this thing is a friggin' brick. This might be a good card to vertical mount, honestly, assuming that you can get it far away enough from the side panel. Okay, it's time to bust this thing out. Oh my God, it's heavy. Oh my lumbago. First things first, you put the batteries in. Look at these crappy batteries. Give me a sec. So this has now become a battery unboxing video. These are triple A's. Comes in a pack of three. <laughs> Get the get in the thing. Can I just have one day without problems? Is that too much to ask? Yes. Batteries installed. Okay, GPU. I don't know how this goes. Probably like that. Does that look right? Sure. And there's a power switch back here somewhere. Aha! Oh, doesn't really illuminate all that well. Kind of a weak RGB implementation. Let's see if it looks better with the lights off. Okay, it's definitely a bit more noticeable now. That's a pretty nice display. All right, let me just set this up here. We'll do a little talky-talky. Okay, I look really short right now because I had to lower my chair so that my head doesn't get cut off. I really need a haircut. Getting sidetracked here. Like I mentioned, this card has to stay competitive performance-wise with an RTX 2080 in order for people to give a crap about it. Otherwise, what's the point? You're not gonna pay more money for less performance. That's if you're strictly talking from a gaming perspective. If you're looking into doing some ray tracing workloads from a professional standpoint, then maybe the 16 gigs of onboard HBM2 memory is enough. That's the beauty of this card is it's sort of flexible, kind of versatile, might be good for someone who likes to work and play, whereas the RTX 2080 is strictly marketed towards a gaming audience. Now, hypothetically, if I was in the market for a new high-end GPU and I had 700 bucks to drop on one, just willy-nilly, personally, I would be looking strictly at raw gaming performance in terms of frame rates, 1% lows, 0.1% lows, and that sort of thing. For gaming in 2019, 16 gigs of VRAM is absolutely insane. It's more than anyone could possibly utilize. And, uh, you know, it's it's nice to have, but you don't necessarily need it. So I think for gamers in particular, it's going to boil down to how fast this is compared to an RTX 2080, especially now that uh, you get FreeSync support with 10 series cards and newer on the GeForce side. It's one less argument for, for high-end AMD GPUs like this. You can't just say, well, you might save 200 bucks, 300 bucks on a FreeSync panel instead of having to go with G-Sync. Well, that's not the case anymore. So this thing really does have to have the performance to back up the price in relation to the competition and I really hope it knocks it out of the park. You guys let me know what your anticipations are or your expectations are, sorry, and uh, what, you, what you think of this card so far. If, if you're hoping that it succeeds, if you are an NVIDIA fanboy and you hate competition and you can't wait to see it fail, let me know down below. Guys, thanks for watching this quick and dirty video. As always, toss a like on it if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. I'm actually going to drop this on the test bed right meow, so I must stop recording or I will get in lots of trouble and I will never get anything like this from AMD ever again. Okay, I'm rambling now. Have a good day.